so when do we say there is an offer and it has been accepted so we know that basis of any contract is an agreement an agreement is nothing but a combination of offer and its acceptance so let's try to understand what are the provisions with related to offer and its acceptance so as per the section 2 subsection a when one person signifies to another his willingness to do or to abstain from doing anything with the view of obtaining assent of that other person in such an act or abstinence he is said to make a proposal so when i make a proposal to you whether i will do this thing or whether i will not do this thing why am i doing so to obtain your consent to obtain your assent to the act which i am promising to do or i am promising not to do that is my intention that is called a proposal or an offer now as i gave you this example that i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh yes i am willing to make i am expressing something that i will buy your car why am i expressing it because i want to buy and i want your consent you should accept it or otherwise i can also make a offer that i will not buy your car for rupees 1 lakh that is also an offer because i am mentioning that i will not do this thing. there also i am looking for your consent for your acceptance that is what is called as an offer or a proposal now these are alternate words a proposal is the word that we are using in indian law an offer comes from the british law but again both are meaning the same so sometimes in different books in different authors in different notes sometimes when you are referring to the notes which i am providing you there also you will see that these words are used interchangeably so don't get confused they mean one and the same right so it is nothing but signifies means expressing what to uh, like first thing is uh, if you are expressing it there are two persons of course you cannot express something to yourself so there are two persons one person signifies to another of course one person has to express something to the other person if without uh, the other person it is not why we are using the word signifies because express means sometimes we are not expressing actually sometimes it is just uh, visible from our behavior itself it gets signified signifies means conveyed so conveying uh, what to willingness to do or willingness not to do and why so to obtain the assent that is what is called as proposal right now the essential conditions with related to proposal with related to valid proposal we should say are these one it says offer must be definite and not vague so whatever you are trying to say it should be definite it should be meaning when i am saying i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh it is very much clear that i want to buy your car and i am quoting the price i should be also quoting which car all those things all those details should be definite they should be fixed it should not be vague vague means something that does not clarify that creates confusion so your offer should not create a confusion it should never create a confusion if you want your proposal to be valid it should be definite it must be definite without being definite there is nothing then the next point says every offer must be capable of creating legal relationship if i'm saying i want to buy your car yes i'm trying to say that is uh, you know there is a willingness there is an intention to create a legal relationship buying or selling a car is legal yes can we say buying or selling car is illegal if it is illegal definitely it will not be considered but we are assuming that it is very much legal right so when we are saying buying and selling car is legal definitely it is going to create a, a legal relationship it is going to create some kind of obligation right so we cannot ignore it then offer can be general or specific it means it you can make it to specifically one person or you can make it in general to the general public as well there is no restriction as such that offers should be made to specific person only it can be made to general public as well then it can be expressed or implied we are using the word signifies right in the definition also we have used the word when one person signifies to another i was saying that signification means nothing but expression but expression is a limit uh, has a limited meaning so it can be expressed or implied also implied means without expressing it is visible it is conveyed it is signified from your behavior from the conduct right that is why we are saying it can be expressed or it can be implied also without expressing also it can be there now why are we doing so the definition itself says in order to obtain assent to such an act or abstinence so the next condition it says to obtain acceptance offer is always made to be accepted if there is no acceptance if there is no uh, like uh, intention to get the acceptance then how can we say it is an offer it requires acceptance right without acceptance we cannot uh, go ahead we cannot move forward we cannot call it as an offer because if you are not looking to accept it like if you are not looking to get it accepted from somebody then what is the purpose why are we saying if i am saying i will buy your car that means i want you to sell your car right if i am not looking for it then why am i saying so it doesn't make any sense right it will become something called as vague 
then both the conditions are not satisfied so it is required and next point is communication of offer is important if the offer is not communicated then what kind of offer it is if i'm just thinking that i want to buy your car and if i'm not telling you by orally or by a letter or something like by text by email some way or the other it should be communicated if it is not communicated if it is just a thought then we cannot call it as an offer so communication is important next point it says invitation to offer is not an offer now there is a difference invitation to offer and offer there are two different uh, concepts some people get confused between offer and invitation to offer like what happens generally when we go to shopping complexes or uh, the retail malls the departmental stores and you see certain products are uh, you know placed over there and you see there is a price tag if you pick up a product and you say that you know the price tag is an offer and i have accepted this offer let's go for it but there we are wrong that is not the concept the concept is the price tag that is mentioned the product that is placed on a department store or a shopping mall wherever you are going if product is there and says a certain price tag is there that price tag is not an offer it is an invitation to offer and based on that invitation to offer when you go to the counter and you ask for the bill that is where you are making an offer and if that offer is accepted by the cashier who is sitting at the counter or whoever the in charge is if that offer is accepted then it becomes a contract the cashier the person in charge over there that person is very much in cap uh, capacity in very much in capability of not accepting your offer sometimes what happens like you you know there is a product which cost rupees 1000 and in a certain shopping mall you see the same product is there and the price tag is printed as 100 now if you see this opportunity that somebody has done a mistake instead of printing 1000 they have printed 100 only and you try to go to the counter and you ask for the bill the cashier realizes that there is a mistake instead of 1000 it has been 100 and the cashier says no there is a mistake you have to pay 1000 and now you start arguing that you have printed the price there is an agreement there is an, a contract but let me tell you that is not a contract that is not an agreement because when you are saying that the price tag that was offered and you are accepting it it is wrong that was just an invitation so there is a difference it is the person who is making an offer rather than making an invitation there have been cases like this and that is how we come to know that there is a difference between offer and invitation to offer right so that is there then next it says offer may be conditional yes we can put a condition also i can say that i will buy your car only if you do this particular thing and if you are not doing that particular thing i will not buy your car so i can put a condition also um, offer can be conditional but it has to be accepted as it is with conditions and that we will look forward in acceptance part and now there is something called as counter offer counter offer is one offer when it is rejected and there is made one more offer that is called counter offer like i will give you one more example with related to shopping only imagine you go to a vegetables market or let's say you go to a fruits market you know you started the first shop you wanted to buy certain fruits you went the first shop you saw there were some apples kept over there you see apples over there and you ask for the price uh, the vendor says that apple is costing 100 rupees per kg now you feel like this 100 rupees is too much you ask him for 80 rupees and he says no i will not sell for 80 rupees now you realize you tell uh, you realize that 80 rupees is too less now what happens you go to the market and rest of the market once you enter you find out that other shopkeepers are selling the same apple for rupees 150 now after you know roaming around the entire market you come back to the first shop again and you ask the same vendor to give the apple for rupees 100 the apple uh, the vendor says no i will not give you for 100 now what would you say there is a there is an argument that uh, uh, there, there was an offer of 100 rupees which now you are accepting and you saying that you know, there is an agreement and buying and selling apples is definitely enforceable so it becomes a contract but again there is a loophole over here the agreement that we are talking about is not an agreement because the moment you rejected the 100 rupees offer and you said 80 rupees that was an counter offer like the first time vendor offered you rupees 100 you could have accepted it but you did not you said i will buy for 80 only now that offer the 80 rupees offer that you made it becomes a counter offer now it's up to the vendor whether he wants to accept it or not but yes vendor did not accept vendor <laughs> made a counter offer now he is saying that i will not sell for 100 that's up to you uh, that, that's up to him right so that is something called as counter offer and as we said offer can be general or 
specific as well uh, this point is already covered point number three these are the conditions it should not be vague it should be definite it should be capable of creating a legal relationship it can be general or specific it can be express or implied the uh, uh, offer is always made to obtain acceptance and it should be communicated and there is a difference between offer and invitation to offer it can be conditional also and there is something called as counter offer as well right these are the conditions now there is a ca popular case law called Balfour versus Balfour. Now, what is this case law? Just have a look at this text that uh, that is there, uh, the story that is there. A and B went on a vacation to England. Due to B's ill health, she, de she decided to stay in England and A promised to pay her monthly allowance till the time she had to stay in England. Later on, A refused to pay her monthly installment. Now, what happens? Now, the, this is a case law between Mr. and Mrs. Balfour. Okay, that is why we are calling it as Balfour versus Balfour. So, Mr. Mrs. Balfour and Mr. Balfour went to England on a vacation and uh, Mrs. Uh, Balfour, uh, she was she fell ill and she decided to stay in England and Mr. Balfour promised her to pay a monthly installment till the time she had to stay in England. Later on, Mr. Balfour refused to pay. Now, based on this argument, based on this agreement, based on this contract, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Balfour went to court and she filed a suit against Mr. Balfour that there was a contract. He agreed to pay me uh, so and so amount, but he now he's not paying. So there is a breach of contract. But it was held that the promise cannot be enforced as there was no intention to create legal relationship. Mr. Balfour just promised like that and the relationship they were having, it was a social relationship. It was not a legal relationship, right? So again, <laughs> legal relationship is something important without which you cannot you know make the contract enforceable as we heard that uh, the uh, offer should be having the capability of creating a legal relationship but there was no legal relationship in this case of Balfour versus Balfour that is why it was again something held now there is one more uh, case law with related to communication of offer uh, between Lalman Shukla versus Gauri Dutt right now this is again a case law uh, just look at the text G sent a servant L to find her missing nephew in the meantime, G announced a reward for the missing boy. L, in ignorance of the announcement, traced the boy and informed G. Later on, L claimed the reward after having knowledge of it. Now, what is this story? I can tell you there is a guy whose nephew is missing, right? Now, this nephew is missing. He's trying to find, but uh, you're not. Uh, sh she is not able to find. Like, uh, yeah, we are talking about Gauridat. So. She is not able to find her nephew. What happens? See, she sends her servant to find the missing nephew. The uh, servant uh, traced here and there and ultimately found the nephew. But that uh, servant, when he was in the process of finding the nephew, it took a lot of time. In the meantime, the lady was, you know, she was actually worried about the nephew. So what she did? She made an announcement that I will pay 1 lakh rupees or some amount she mentioned. 1 lakh is just an example I'm giving. She announced that I will pay this much amount to somebody who will find my missing nephew. Now what happened? Finally, this guy, the servant who was already sent, he found the nephew and he comes back with the nephew. He uh, sends it back uh, to the person who appointed him. Right? Now, after <laughs> uh, doing the job, the servant gets to know about this information that there was a reward to the person who will find the nephew. Now he goes and he asks for the reward. He was like, uh, yes, you based, you made an announcement that you will pay one lakh rupees to who, uh, to somebody who will find and I, I did that job so I should be getting that amount. But the lady <laughs> rejected. She was like, I will not pay you. Now this guy went to court and he was like, there was an offer which was made in general. Yes, there was. it was a general offer. And I have accepted this offer and finding a boy is something that is not illegal. So this agreement becomes a contract and I should be getting the reward. Now what happened? <laughs> it was decided that you did this job without knowing about the offer. So the communication of offer was not to you. So it was held that his claim was dismissed on the ground that it was not based on any binding contract. Why there was no binding contract? Because L had no knowledge of existence of an offer. At the time you were performing the contract, as you're saying that I have found the boy, 
the time you were finding the boy you did not know about the offer at all so there was no knowledge of this kind of any kind of offer like this being into existence so if you didn't know how can you perform it so it was held that that uh, the, uh, there was l had no knowledge of existence of an offer and there can be no acceptance in ignorance of an offer that is also a very popular case law so these are the these two case laws are actually quite popular so i have included over here some people include with the agreement on offer uh, agreement itself but yeah depending upon how they take it now next there is a small topic called promisor promisee and prom uh, promise promisor and promisee now what are these things promise is nothing but an offer which is accepted so offer when accepted becomes a promise and the person who does this promise is called promiser and the person to whom this promise is done is called promisee simple offer when accepted becomes a promise and if i am making the promise like if i am saying i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh and if you, if you accept it so this becomes a promise now since i have promised to buy your car i am a promisor and you have accepted it so you are like this promise has been made to you so you are a promisee and the uh, promise between us yes of course that is that is there right so that is a small concept like these terms are used sometimes we use promise sometimes we use promise or sometimes we use we use promisee so we need to know what are these terminologies right next it is acceptance now we understood about offer offer has certain conditions that it should be it uh, it, it should be able to create legal relations which should not be vague it should be definite it should be communicated right all those conditions and but any offer to become a promise it should be accepted so we need to know what is acceptance as per section 2 subsection b when a person to whom proposal is made signifies his assent there to the proposal is said to be accepted so here two things are important to be noted one is when a person to whom proposal is made yes that is important the person to whom offer or proposal is made that person should signify again we are using the word signify signify means convey it can be uh, yes expressed or implied both his assent assent means consent there to two things giving consent of what of the proposal to whom of course to the pro uh, like that we are not looking or uh, if you are giving a uh, consent to something you know that has been proposed but who is giving if that proposal was made to you or not if it was made to you again there are two conditions we uh, studied about offer that offer can be general or specific if it was a general it can be accepted by anybody but if it is specific to you then only you can accept it not anybody else right so again there is a case law with related to this uh, uh, first condition it says acceptance must be made by a certain person that is what we studied right when a person to whom proposal is made signifies his assent there too so to whom it is made that is important but there is a case law it says that acceptance must uh, like uh, there is a condition this is a, a rule or condition of a valid acceptance it says it must be accepted if it is not accepted we cannot uh, say accepted by a certain person so again with this uh, thing there is a case law called kalil versus carbolic smoke ball company now what is this case law just have a read carbolic smoke ball company advertised that they would pay a certain amount to anyone who used their smoke ball for 2 weeks and suffered from influenza now this is a condition they advertise there is a company which advertised they are selling a product called smoke ball they are saying that if you smoke our smoke ball for 2 weeks and suffered from influenza influenza is a disease they are saying if like it, it's a cure that they are claiming that their smoke ball will cure the influenza in 2 weeks and if somebody who does smoke the their smoke ball for 2 weeks and still suffering from influenza they will pay a certain amount of money right this is the claim this is it's an uh, advertisement now there is a lady mrs carlil used the smoke ball as per prescribed instructions and suffered influenza yes she used it and still suffered influenza now what should be done what happened when she went to the company and she asked for money the company rejected that there was no acceptance as such and she went to the court then then what happened it was held that company was held liable to pay the amount as company advertised advertised in general but it was accepted by a certain person now when you are making an advertisement as a company that is made to general in public and it can be accepted by anybody so since it was a general offer mrs carlil has accepted it and she has fulfilled all the prescribed conditions whatever you have attached with the product or with the advertisement 
so she is eligible to get the money because you have advertised so so this one is again a very popular case law so make sure that you are not forgetting this one then the rule number 2 the condition number 2 it says acceptance must be absolute and unconditional see absolute means whatever has been you should be saying yes simply you cannot say that i am accepting if i'm saying that i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh and if you saying yes you can buy my car car for rupees 1 lakh but you have to do this and this then it will not be a proper acceptance because acceptance should be it must be absolute and unconditional you cannot put a condition with the acceptance offer can be conditional but acceptance cannot be here see in case of uh, mrs carlel itself she fulfilled all the prescribed instructions and conditions if she is not saying then it will not be proper acceptance since she has fulfilled all the conditions then only we are saying that it is a proper acceptance so it must be absolute and unconditional then how to communicate how the acceptance should be what should be the mode of acceptance acceptance must be communicated in some reasonable re, uh, in some reasonable and usual manner in a normal ma uh, what, whatever we are it should be accepted in general reasonable whatever feels uh, reasonable or you as usual whatever feels like in that manner it should be accepted or communicated but if promiser states the mode of acceptance the acceptance should be communicated in that particular mode only if i'm saying that i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh if you are accepting this proposal please write a letter to me so now if you want to accept this proposal you should be writing a letter otherwise it will not be accepted if it is not mentioned then it can be accepted and it can be communicated by any means you can just put up a simple message that i yes i accept your proposal but if i'm saying that i need read a letter i require a letter then the acceptor should be sending a letter so if the pro uh, proposer or promisor states the mode of acceptance the acceptance should be communicated in that particular mode only rule number 4 acceptance must be given within a reasonable period of time reasonable reasonable is something that you know we have to take care of so uh, if you're saying like if i'm saying that i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh and if you are accepting after 3 years can we say it is reasonable no i'm making an offer now so it should be accepted now like now in the sense within a few days or within a few weeks maybe a one or two months not beyond that if you are accepting after 6 months or after one year you cannot say that you know i am bound by your acceptance no uh, there is no agreement because there was the reasonable time is has lapsed uh, within the time prescribed by the offerer or the promisor that is also there if i'm saying that i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh and if you are accepting this offer please communicate to me within 2 weeks so within 2 weeks it should be communicated that becomes a reasonable time then otherwise if it is not mentioned then reasonable in general what you seem fit mental acceptance is no acceptance like imagine that you have made an offer to me that uh, you know i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh now if i'm getting that offer and i want to sell it but instead of uh, you know send uh, saying it to you i just communicated i made a, m a mind that i will sell my car to you for the offer that you have made but until and unless i communicate to you it is not an acceptance so mental acceptance is no acceptance it should be communicated without <laughs> communication it is not there so mental acceptance does not mean i i have accepted in my mind but did i tell you or did i communicate did i complete all the procedures no then it is not an acceptance next condition acceptor must be aware of proposal yes that we already uh, you know uh, looked in the case of uh, lalman shukla versus gauri dat yes this case law uh, where it is yeah this one lalman shukla versus gauri dat that uh, when this guy when the servant who is suing the uh, gauri dat for uh, not rewarding him because uh, the court held that this guy was not aware of the offer so you have accepted there are, there was a general offer which you have accepted but you were not aware of it so the acceptor must be aware of what the offer is so it cannot be then and acceptance is of all terms and conditions if you are accepting you are accepting everything you cannot accept partially so all the terms and conditions of the offer must be accepted right next point says acceptance must be given before the offer lapses if i am saying that i will buy your car this is an advertisement and i am mentioning that this offer is open for one week so it should be communicated should be accepted within a week after a week the offer itself lapses so that does not make any sense right so these are the points these are a few conditions uh, yeah
next is communication but these are the conditions first one it says it must be made by a certain person it must be absolute and unconditional it should be made in the pro uh, made in the proper um, uh, mode of uh, acceptance by the proper mode which is uh, you know uh, what we got as stated as per uh, the mode stated by the uh, offerer or the promisor then it must be given within a reasonable time there should not be mental acceptance acceptance must be uh, acceptor must be aware of the proposal and it should be of all terms and conditions and given before the offer lapses right these are your uh, conditions rules and regulations with related to offer and acceptance in our next class we will look into communication and revocation of proposal and acceptance